Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to the 40th episode of Bible Study. Can we get a round of applause for the 40th episode of Bible Study? Amen, amen. Thank God for continuing to be with us for the last 40 weeks, continuing to dive deep into the Word, continuing to learn, continuing to grow, have our youth leaders, our pastors, and everybody that came about to be able to educate me and everybody else that came along on this journey. Today, we'll be diving into John chapter 18, verses 28 through 40. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by Brendan Nate, and we're going to end off with a prayer by me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day that you've given us. Thank you for your many mercies and your goodness towards us. Thank you that we're able to press in and to see the more that you have for us in and through your word. Father, we pray the prayer of David. Uh, open up our eyes so that we may behold the wondrous things out of your law, Lord Jesus, out of your words. Uh, your words, you remind us in John 6, their spirit and life. Let them come alive today for our listeners. Uh, those that will listen uh, today, those that will listen next week, those that will listen in the weeks and the months to come. Let these words be fresh revelation, but also be encouraging and uplifting and inspiring for those that will join us in and throughout this day and this time. And for all things, we give your name the praise, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Today we'll be reading from the NLT version. Jesus' trial before the plate. Jesus' trial before Calabas ended in the early hours of the morning. Then he then he was taken to the headquarters of the Roman government. His accusers didn't go inside because it would define them and they wouldn't be allowed to celebrate the Passover. We're going to stop right there uh, with verses 28 because I had a question uh, about this. I didn't really understand uh, why the accusers couldn't go inside. It says, and... Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't be able to uh celebrate the Passover. So I'm kinda I'm kinda um confused on that one. How is them going inside preventing them from celebrating the Passover? I would answer this with I would I would I would answer this um question provoking you to do a little bit more research. If you go and check in the culture at that time, the world at that time, also what was the custom of the Passover? Um there are certain things in the old um, covenant uh, you can read through Exodus. You can look at it um, in specific chapters again. It didn't come back to me. It'll come back to me in Exodus. And also when they recall it in Deuteronomy, that will um, help bring light and sh shed some, uh, I guess you could say, shed some light culturally about why they had that view. But um, you can kind of tell, to be honest, that as you connect the dots to now, there was they were making the main they're making the wrong thing the main thing. Short 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 answer, but definitely look at the culture and you'll get understanding what was going on in that in the world around the time. I think part of it too, um, inside uh, the governor's uh, the governor's headquarters were Gentiles, and they didn't want to mix themselves. Uh, with the Gentile. That's why they said they would defile themselves. They would become uh, ceremonially unclean. Right? So they didn't want to mix themselves with the Gentiles. So that was um, part of the reasons why they didn't want to go inside. So that's why Pilate came out to meet them. Okay, thank you. I did not know that. Now, right, guys, we'll be diving back into the scripture. Verse 29. So the plate. So plate. The government went out to them and asked, what is your charge against this man? We wouldn't have handed him over to you if he weren't a criminal, they revolted. Then take him away and the judge and judge him by your own law, the plaintiff told them. I'm going to stop right there. I have another question. How come the plaintiff didn't uh went ahead and judge Jesus and just put it in into um their hand instead of doing it their own? Pilate was reading to um it, for verse 31, Pilate, um, as it was said of him, he wasn't interested in judging internal Jewish um, matters, internal Jewish disputes. Um, you can look and see and compare and contrast um, to what happened in Acts chapter 18, 
Rivers is 14 and 15 as well. Um, where he emphasized it's not lawful for us to put anyone to death. They had taken basically the right to impose capital punishment. The Romans had taken the St. Hadrian's, the priests of that day, their right to do so. So just historical notes, so to help you um, put things together. You see there were certain exceptions to the rule, but um, most cases they took that right to impose capital punishment. Good question. Uh, any thoughts or opinion uh, from verses 28 to 31? My, my, I'm thinking maybe... Maybe it was nah. I I agree with Jav, um, that uh, um, what was he saying that they didn't want to defy themselves because they didn't want to mix with the Gentiles. But some part mm-hmm. of me thinks that they weren't secure in their um, in their claims against God, and a part of them they didn't want to face the things that they were saying about him because, even though I think it was a, a mix of their disdain for the Gentiles, I think they didn't want to have to face the, the the jealousy that they had inside their hearts um, towards Jesus and what he was doing. It could definitely be that as well as an underlying issue. But what mm-hmm. Jave was saying was basically, um, as I was looking it up, because as soon as the question, I was like, let me start digging up because uh, um, Ezra didn't inform us that he was going to heavy hit with the question on the historical <laughs> um, Gotta go back to school, uh, man. platform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to dig up some notes and stuff like that. But what Jave was saying was definitely right. Mm-hmm. And you can see references to that um, in the Matthew um, parallel to this as well with, mm-hmm. the, with their meeting. Um, it is Jewish tradition that they couldn't go into a Gentile building or oh, wow. with the roof on it without becoming ceremonially unclean for the ceremony's sake being unclean so there was some literacy to that but if Mm -hmm. you read through the book of John um, Emmanuel you do Mm -hmm. see the disdain and they would have to have confronted and that's why I believe Pilate didn't want to be a part of selling that dispute if Mm -hmm. that makes sense so because he he was like listen this is not my matter to handle You, you guys need to sort this out and they didn't really want to, but they had their plan, you know. So, you know, good thinking, you know, is to, to connect the bridge as well. I like, I like, I like what y'all doing. Josh, you look like you're doing some serious thinking. I'm just taking it all in. <laughs> just listen to them. And I think that's the beauty, because some weeks there's like easy takeaways, spiritual context, but also there's some things contextually, historically, you have to start looking at. I think for us as brothers, as we study and dive into the word, this helps us to, you know, answer all men and, and, and help us to have an answer for our faith. Um, sometimes we miss the historical context and sometimes we can misconstrue revelation because we're not really looking at the context or um, we're not connecting the bridge properly, uh, as they say, uh, hermeneutically. Uh, you know, they're not, we're, not connect, we're not making the parallels correctly to help make sense of text. So. You're asking some really good questions beyond even the spiritual scope. So I like, I like, I like what's happening here. We're taking a deeper dive. I like, I like that. And holistically, yeah, I like it. Five five dollars if you give uh what's it? The five, it's like five principles and hermeneutic hermeneutics is it historical on historical. What else are the other four? I believe cultural is one of them. Cultural. Um this is bad, man. Oh, preacher. No, nah, sometimes I come up there. <laughs> I, I hear you. Bad. Historical, um, cultural. Is it physical? No. No. Oh man, this is bad. I got I got through my research, man. You're talking about basic hermeneutical principles, or yeah, it's like I know it's the crossing the bridge. Matter of fact, okay. I might just. I might do a little I know, I there. know, I know. If I if I remember, one of them is that scripture is the best interpreter of scripture. Mm-hmm. It's by the scriptures, and the text must be interpreted in context. That's that's mm-hmm. off. That's off my memory. Without we have to come back to the viewers and say, all right, this is what it is. <laughs> 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 those, those, it. Those, those are the two I remember off the top of my head. Yes, sir. I didn't even think about that, but that's a good way to um thinking more deep into 
the word. Before I move on to the uh, next scriptures, any thoughts, any opinion? Oh, so we good? All right. Only the Romans were permitted to execute someone, the Jewish leaders replied. This fulfilled Jesus' prediction about the way he would die. Then the plaintiff went back to into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked him. Jesus replied, Is this your own question or did others tell you to ask about me? Am I a Jew? The plaintiff revolted. Your own people and their leaders, um, priests, brought you to me for trial. Why have you, why, what have you done? I right, wanna, we're, we're gonna stop right here. I think this is an interesting question that Jesus asks in verses 34 when he asks, Is this your question or did the others tell you? I feel like this is significant, um, with that scripture, but I can't really like get my finger on it. I guess to help dig into the answer, I, my question would be to you is what is the thing that stands out? What's the best thing? What's the thing that stands out to you? What's some what's something when you read it? Because it sounds like something you were reading over and over again as um, what was something that kind of stood out to you in that conversation? Was it that Jesus had the, the boldness to ask him that, a government official that had the influence to change the narrative? Or what, what, what was it that, that might have leaped out at you? Because sometimes it's the little things that can help you to you know, dive in to explore further. Nothing is too small. No observation is too small. I think it's a, uh, the boldness. I know Jesus has always had a boldness in him. He's not like a kind of, like, I'm afraid of you type of person. And I know it's always significant behind what he was saying. Because sometimes he'll say the smallest things and it mean it have a, such a powerful and big meaning to it. So that's why I was trying to like, I was trying to see if this, this, this 34, not even just 34, like the other scripture, but I was mainly focused on 34. Does 34 have like a higher meaning to it? Or it's just like... I think he, I think um, Jesus was trying to see Pilate's heart. That could be a way of seeing Pilate's heart, even though he was, he was coming on behalf of the people and he, he, he kind of saw himself not really in that situation. Maybe God was trying to see what Pilate thought about him. Or maybe it could be that type of situation where it's like, um, um, who do they say I am when God was talking to the disciples? Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what chapter or verse, but I think Jesus asked another time his disciples, um, who do they say that I am? And some said a Messiah or forgot the other answer. But um, yes, maybe it was something like that. Elijah or some prophet. Yes, I, I hear what you're saying. I think it's in, in, in Matthew 16. That, that's good. Okay. Thank you for that. Because that's exactly where I was, I was trying to get at. Uh, that's exactly what I was trying to get at. Uh, any, any more thoughts or opinion from the last few verses? I think it's interesting how much um, this exchange between Pilate and, and Jesus and how he's really trying to pivot, right? He does not know what to do. He's really trying to pivot and find a way out of the situation. One, he's trying to put the, the responsibility on someone else, right? So he says, um, judging by your own law, right? He's trying to put the blame and responsibility on someone else because he, he's in a situation he doesn't really know how to handle it. So he's trying to pivot. So he says that, right? That's one. Uh, blame, so he's trying to put the blame and the responsibility on someone else. Uh, he tried to find a way to escape so that he could release Jesus, right? But we know that the crowd wasn't allowing that to happen. So uh, for me, it, it's just interesting, this exchange between him and how much uh, Pilate is really trying to pivot and find a way out of it and Eventually, we learned that, you know, he didn't. He succumbed to, to the demands of the crowd, right? So mm -hmm. I found that particularly, that exchange interesting. I think also, too, with, with that, I think he was trying to, that pivot, I think the pivot that he was looking for was like, was this a religious matter or was this a political matter? Because he would have greater jurisdiction if it was a political matter. Mm -hmm. But if this is a religious matter, he, he he he's gonna pivot his foot the other way, like in the basketball play. I'm not mm -mm, not doing it. Yeah, y'all yeah. gonna solve this. Yeah, you know. So that pivot, that pivot, that was great. That I, I like that. That 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 caught that caught me. Um, the pilot was in between in the crossroads. Yeah, and I think it, had he gone the wrong way about it, that would have affected him serving as governor, right? That the people would have, have, have revolted if if he didn't handle that. So he's trying to handle this in the interest of his position, 
right? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily in the interest of what's best for Jesus or what the crowd is doing, but think about himself and his position. Yeah. Verse 35 says that. He asks, like, am I a Jew? Like, he, 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 I almost said a little sense, sense a little sarcasm. I'm like, he know he ain't no Jew. But, <laughs> right. but one thing that he brings to light, which I loved in their discourse, he was like, your people brought you to me. Not not the Romans. Right. You know, considering, you know, yeah. <laughs> There's so much you can pull from that. He said, listen, this wasn't me. No Roman soldier of our own set out and looked for you. You weren't a fugitive to the government. Right. But to your people, you were a fugitive. How interesting is that, you know, well, you know, especially with what came out this week about, or in the past couple of days, about what we kind of already knew. For example, with the, the death of Malcolm X, you know what I'm saying? How interesting, you know, you, you, mm. if your government is looking for you, they're going to find a way to find you. Yeah, I know I'm not getting in trouble for saying it, but I'm just saying, but, but if, if, if your own people, if your own people conspire to set you up to, to take a fall, they'll do whatever it takes as well. You know what I'm saying? Right. And once Absolutely. again, it's better to be safe in the master's hands overall than in the hands of men that can turn you over. Or, you know, that, 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 that Pilate wasn't wrong. Because Pilate was like, listen, you're not an enemy to our government. You're not an enemy to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're an enemy to your own people. And I could concur this to, like, say if you're in a situation where you're forced to make a decision. um, Because you got to be loyal to your people, even though you don't uh, stand on this. And I'm mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of I'm kind of like thinking back to that. Sometimes your hand is forced just based on your your stance or the people that you with, not even based on your own thoughts or opinion or where you stand. So far, I think too, Nate, and looking at it, um, that pilot in questioning him as well, wanted to see what his intentions were, um, because remember mm -hmm. the, everyone's uh, preconceived notion of uh, it's Messiah. Uh, wasn't necessarily a, a religious leader that would come and and he would they didn't perceive him to come for the purpose that Jesus was coming for. They thought he was coming to overthrow the government, that he would be right. uh, the next mm -hmm. king. And so uh, I'm, I'm in looking at this again, possibly asking to, to find out what Jesus's true intentions were. Are you here, you know, religious purpose or are you here to overthrow the government? Are you here to overthrow um, this Roman uh, government or Roman leadership? So mm -hmm. I think that's part of it as well. Definitely. Brother Josh. Still taking it in, trying to figure out how to form this question. About, okay. Go ahead. Uh, one thing I, I really just find, uh, it's not even a question. I'm just, because I also went down a little bit as you guys were talking, but I'm really interested um, in, like you guys said, just the questions that Pilate is asking, right? Thinking about his position and stuff like that. But um, after Jesus is brought into the place, I'm just, I can't, what was it? I was looking at verse 33 again, and it says, then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked him. And then obviously further down it goes, it shows their conversation. So I'm, I'm kind of curious as if Pilate is having like a change of heart or not that his mind was necessarily made up in the first place, but like if he's, I guess it just shows that he's considering like whether Jesus is guilty or not. And I guess we'll get into that more as we go further down. That was just my, my thought, but we can move on. I didn't hear a question. I just heard an interesting observation. I think, what, as you said that, that's I think that's why it's important to read down because you actually see the conclusion of the conversation. And also, in the version that I was looking at, the Holman Christian Study Bible, verse 38, very quiet verse, he said, so what is truth, said Pilate. And I'm like, my man. And you and, and, and you have to go back into what the dialogue was in verse 37, where Pilate was like, so you are a king then. And he says, you say that I'm a king. Jesus replied, I was born for this. And I've come to the world for this, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And, and it says, okay, so I guess what's happening in 38, is this philosophical? Is this social? This, this dialogue between Jesus and Pilate, you know, I think this dialogue between Jesus and Pilate, really sets the tone and helps to, you know, bring fulfillment as the the verses prior said to what kind of death mm. he would die, you know? Mm. And, and just looking back at how all this plays out, one thing that just 
um, stood out to me was verse 36. I had made a note because a couple of years ago, I, 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 I did a personal Bible study. This note came back to me um, from verse 36 when at the end of verse 35, Pilate asks, what have you done? And um, Jesus said in verse 36, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I wouldn't be handed over to the Jews. Now, guys, we'll begin into the last four verses of the day. Verses 36 says, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it's where my followers will fight, my followers will fight to keep me from being hanged over the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. Plainly said, so you are a king? Jesus responded, you say I'm a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. What is true? Plainly said, plainly asked. Then Jesus, then he went out again to the people and told them, He is not guilty of any crime, but you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner each year at Passover. Would you like me to release the king of the Jews? But they shouted back, No, 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 not this man. We want Barabbas. Barabbas was a revolutionary. As it is, my kingdom does not have its origin here. That's the main thing that stood out to me, verse 36, in the whole dialogue. I have two questions uh, based on the, the scripture I just read. The first question is, so if um, the plan found Jesus uh, not guilty, how come did he still be persecuted? And since when, uh, the second question is, since when, Barabbas was revolutionary because didn't the scripture say that he was a robber? Yeah, I was confused. I never, I never seen him be called a revolutionary. Me too. Uh, oh, it's all about a matter, all matter of interpretation and how the word word origins. So you're you're diving into another area, like which is good, of uh, learning what the origin of the person's name might mean. You know, um, why certain interpretations would have revolutionary versus thief at all goes back to like the Greek breakdown of the word itself. The connotation, I believe, of looking at his name and looking at revolutionary. Um, when I looked it up um, in my quick um, dictionary definition, in my Strong's dictionary, um, it also meant to plunder. So that means there was some connotation that if you were a revolutionary, you were also a plunderer, a robber, a thief. You know. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's. I, I, I want to dive into that some more. Cause I was like, let me see what the Greek for that means and. When it's a revolutionary, that's also like a thief and a robber. So I was like, I, I got, I want to dig in some more with that. So that's wow. probably it. that's another that's that's another thing, you know. And that's what I was really enjoying today too, because it, we're like holistically having like a whole roundtable, not just spiritually, but also historically and, and contextually, and letting you know that this thing, this this good scripture is 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 rich, all the way around, you know. So to answer your first, that question. Um, Barabbas in his nature was not no he wasn't <laughs> and if you look it up um, from the new King James the King James version they'll definitely tell you he was a thief but uh, um, you'd have to really study the more a little bit the story of Barabbas Why, what made him be considered a revolutionary was his plundering a part of a greater scheme because you also have to remember too and if you read when we get to the book of Acts you're going to see that this thing comes up concerning the children of the way and the religious leader said there are a lot of revolutions that happened, but they were stomped out because it wasn't from the Lord. But if it is from the Lord, it will sustain. You, you, you'll see that discussion come up later, you know. So was he a part of a revolution? Let's dig in and find out, you know, do, do some study. Was he a part of a revolution that got stamped out and he was a prisoner of the revolution? Kind of like with what happened in the last summer and stuff like that. People were getting arrested. They weren't looters. Some, well, some were looters, but some people who got arrested were literally people that were just protesting the cause of the evil, you know, um, the, so, the, the social ills. And, you know, I, my mind thought about that when it came to answering the second question. Can you say again the first question? I'm going to refer that. So in the scripture, the plaintiff says that he found Jesus gu um, not guilty of any charge, right? But how mm -hmm. come later was Jesus still persecuted? Uh, okay. 
I think Pilot was put in a pretty interesting position here because it's like he has he has the crowd outside who wants one thing, but then he just had a personal and intimate conversation with Jesus. And it's kind of showing how I would I dare say his heart's kind of changing a little bit. So that's why he was curious. He was asking questions. So you are a king. Uh, what have you done? What is the truth? So I think we have to consider, I don't really have a specific answer to your question, but I think we have to consider the position that Pilate was in. And remember, before the conversation even happened, he tried to put the responsibility onto the other people. He didn't want to carry that burden of of doing this. So I just think that's something to consider. Good, Josh. Yeah. That's a great observation. Yeah, I think it goes back to what uh, Jave was talking about earlier about uh, pivoting and doing what's right for him in a thing in a political sense. And um, chat, uh, verse 38 made, it, made me really think about his tone. Was he being sarcastic to like kind of alleviate the pressure and tell him that, there, that Jesus was no threat? Like he says um, um, in verse 38, would you, re- would you like me to release this king of the Jews? Was he being serious or was, or was that his tone because um, in the previous verses, God was kind of basically saying, like, in, chapter, in verse 36, like, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. So maybe when Jesus was saying these things to, um, to Pilate, he was, like, Pilate thinking, like, this, this guy, Jesus is saying, like, you're not on my level. Like, we're, we're not we're not on the same uh, playing field. So maybe when he goes back down to verse uh, 38, he, his heart kind of changed. And maybe he's thinking that Jesus just thinks he's better than him. But I don't know. I could. I could be wrong, you know. Another thing that leaped out, as you said, too, I, I um, with verse 38, mm-hmm. why that stood out to me as well, when he asked what is truth from the version that I read, mm-hmm. the Roman study Bible, you could tell that this was philosophical. He wanted to see Pilate's heart change. It wasn't really about spiritual or revelation. It was mm-hmm. really his decision that, okay, based off my conversation you're a teacher of philosophy and if you're saying the kingdom is not of the world you're thinking like more abstract you're thinking you know because philosophy can be abstract if you've taken any courses in philosophy and stuff like that you see the abstract thought that goes throughout history and the exploration of the mind and exploration of thought process so Pilate probably concluded you're a philosopher in his lens, you're a philosopher. Mm-hmm. You're not really a threat to the Roman government. Mm-hmm. So what causes him to succumb to the pressure, I really believe he used the loophole that he had. He said, you have a custom. In verse 39, he said, you have a custom mm-hmm. in your festival that one is released free of charge, basically. And mm-hmm. here's the two. You got Barabbas or you got Jesus. So that was kind of his way out because, like, wait a minute, you have a tradition since we've, you know, come together in the government to release one of the people who might have been guilty of a crime in the spirit of your festival. He was observing the spirit of their festival, but in his mind, if it was up to Pilate, um, and if you look through other parallels of how the story goes with Matthew and, and Mark and Luke, you know, mm-hmm. I, I really don't have a problem with the man. I really don't. If it was up to me, I think I was Luke or Mark when I was saying that he was really pressed. Like, I really don't want to release Barabbas because Barabbas, mm. in our eyes, is guilty. Right, right. Yeah. This man is, Peter and John, this man is just bringing a philosophy that's just shaking and rattling your Jewish religious world and understanding. I have no problem with him. He's not a threat to our government. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... You know how the story unravels. Yeah. And when, when we read the next chapter um, next week, he, he says that. He says, no, just no. I, I did not find any charges to uh, convict him to be guilty, right? So he tells the crowd that, but he then releases um, Jesus to them anyways. But go back, going back up to 38, um, one thing that my Bible pointed out um, was that um, Pilate's understanding of truth was relative in the mm-hmm. sense that um, he accepted to be true what majority accepted to be true, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's why um, when you f- go further down, 
he says, but you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner, right? And the crowd says, no, we don't want uh, Barabbas. Give, give us Jesus. He accepted that to be true. So he, he went ahead with that relative truth based on what the crowd uh, deemed was true. And again, I believe it's all to protect his, his political agenda and wanted mm-hmm. to, to maintain um, his political power, his, his, his status and role in the government, a governor. Because had he not released Jesus, it would have been a problem. They, they would have been an uproar, right? They would have been a problem. And so um, that, that's something else that, that stood out to me, that, that he understood truth to be relative, whatever the, the majority went with. Yeah, it's crazy to see how much, how much power the people have because you see the contracts. I believe it was an Acts where um, I believe uh, I think it was Peter that that did a miracle, and they were tried in court, but they didn't want to. They didn't want to persecute them because if they would have persecuted them, then the then people would have started rioting. So I think with politics or whatever, it's always. Well, not always, but sometimes it could be in the interest of the people. If the people have the opportunity to really change the narrative of things or change uh, leadership positions or just ruffle feathers of those in uh, higher power, I think the politicians are going to want to ponder to what the people are doing instead of doing what is right, whether it be for uh, religious or for not religious purposes. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Good take with that. I think thirty six really brings the cap like really brings the ice thing to it, and then what you see happens after thirty six, and as we keep alluding to, in verse thirty seven and thirty eight, this was critical. This is more critical than you know, or this was a critical part in the dialogue that would set the tone for as Javé was saying what will happen in verse nineteen, um, chapter nineteen, you know, and um, they said it's crazy. They shouted back, you know, in verse forty. Not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas, we want him free. We want him forgiven. Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 it's interesting because obviously, as we read through the Gospels, just a couple days before, some of the same people that were in the crowd were crying Hosanna, which means save us. You it's know? Crazy that. I was thinking that. The, the crowd can turn once things get found out. Now, it's crazy because there is a current event that kind of stirs that same pot and ruffles that same tree, if you be honest, you know, mm-hmm. and it just shows you that, man, this, this thing doesn't change. I, I was even looking at the, um, the ac- accusations put against, you know, uh, Cuomo, for example, like, wow, we just hailed this man a year ago as a great thought leader and the one that really helped to give and change the narrative concerning the pandemic at its height at when, when it would seem like everybody everybody at some point had the coronavirus. And now looking a year later, you know, accusations is coming out against him and, and how he handled the nursing home situation. Now people are calling for his head. And it's just so interesting that, you know, when it comes to the majority, sometimes, sometimes it can be fickle, but part of why it's so fickle because you have so many thoughts. And if you can get somebody to galvanize one thought enough, you can get the masses to buy in. Mm. We see this throughout history. We see this yep. throughout, it's about everything. In the spirit of Black History Month, you saw this in the civil rights movement. You saw this with those that were anti-civil rights movement. You, there's just so much parallels you can kind of see with this, you know? Yep. Um, even with the case that you were talking about before we went live on um, Manny. Uh-huh. What do you mean? What, you know, there's so much parallels. Like, you know, that that is like, wow. Yeah. It, it, it can yep. turn. The tide can really turn. But that's why you don't want to be. Don't, don't, don't do things for the praise of people. I know that's not what the story is talking about per se. But it's just uh-huh. good to interject that in there. You know, uh, some people won't even acknowledge you until I shared a status about that from somebody on my Facebook uh, last night. Some people won't acknowledge you until some of higher stature acknowledges you. And then they're like, oh, yeah, man, yeah, man, this man's amazing. Yeah, this man, yeah, man, he's a great preacher. Oh my gosh, you're right, man, man. I remember the time when he ministered, with, but you wouldn't honor me and you wouldn't even esteem, you wouldn't even say hello to me. But if you see an, a, a, a presiding, a, somebody that presides over you 
or somebody, even on the job, you see that. If you see the CEO saying, man, I, I have my eye on you. And they're like, no, oh yeah, of course we, yeah, we, we've had our eye on them for years. It, you know, right. it just sees the, the fickleness of the masses sometimes, you know? And, right. and right. They, they, they cried, save us. And then by verse 40 of chapter 19, they're like, no, 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 give us Barabbas. We, we, we want Jesus on the platter. You, you, we, we're going to deal with him. Yep. Mm. I always say this, and I got this from um Tyler Perry. People are like leaves. Wherever the wind blow, that's where they go. If the blow, if the wind blow right, they right. Yep. Wind blow left, they left. If the wind blow up, they up. If it blow down, they down. And sure. but sometimes we're guilty of it too. But that's another conversation. I, I, but going back to what we were talking about with Pilate. I, it wasn't until when I read through the scriptures and read through the gospel and did a study through the gospel that man, Pilate was more of an X factor than than we thought in the whole narrative of the crucifixion. Pilate was that X factor because if Pilate stood his ground and said, "Listen, all right, this man's a philosopher. I don't care what you think. Right. He's coming to you. You're going to solve this problem." Mm-hmm. But then, but you see the tug and tug and pull because some of the Sanhedrin would say, "Oh no, we'll go higher than you." And then let that let that let um let Caesar know that listen, your man Pilate's not devout to you. He's not devout to the empire. You would have seen another tug of war, yep. which would have probably distracted from what the whole narrative was about, mm-hmm. fulfilling the prophecy in the earlier verse. I think it's verse thirty-two talking about, about what kind of death he should die. Mm-hmm. The fulfillment wouldn't have happened without this. The fulfillment I don't think would have happened if it was so distracted. So I I, I like the fact that we get that inkling in verse 32. This is to show what kind of, it gives us the map to what would be happening next. So mm-hmm. I got great writing by John about that. Yeah. So real quick, my fault, y'all. Uh, Holy Spirit just mm-hmm. comes in my spirit. Um, mm-hmm. At the beginning, Nate said, um, when you read through, through John and, you know, scriptures like this, it uh, um, helps you to, to really defend your faith, right? And we, we should be able to defend our faith. And mm-hmm. so this question, it's not, it's rhetorical. Don't answer it. There's something for you to contemplate on and um, just meditate on from now till you know the rest of the week, whatever. Um, but what is your truth? Right? Um, what is your truth? Right? And uh, as as we've discussed in the the ending of our study, we saw how Pilate went with whatever wherever the leaves blew, as 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 Ron was saying, right? Um, so what is your truth, right? Because the leaves may be blown to the right, but the truth is to the left. And sometimes being in that position, being the only one to stand for truth, it's a lot of pressure and it's tough, right? But whatever your truth is, you stand on that, even if everybody else is blown to the right, knowing that you have to go to the left. So know your truth, stand on your truth and live that truth. And so just, just contemplate that. What is your truth? Um, and, and, you know, let the Holy Spirit bring forth revelation to you and, and insight. Definitely. Definitely. That's a great, that's a great question. Yes, sir. And, and oh, you jumping in, Nate? No. So this was an amazing Bible study. Thank you guys so much for your thoughts, opinions, uh, revelations, uh, God speaking through y'all. Thank you guys so much for your time. Now, I guys, we'll be getting into the ending prayer, which will be done by me. Then we're going to be doing the closing for the video. If you can, just bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you, God. We thank you for this day that you have made. I will rejoice in the God and the God. I thank you for my brothers, God. I thank you for each and every single one of them to continue to just come to Bible study with me to be able to discuss the word, to be able to give me new ideas, give me new thoughts, give me new revelation, give me a better understanding of the word, God. We just pray that we continue to dive deep in the word each and every single week, God. We pray that you continue to speak through us, God. We pray that these Bible study will be a blessing on to the people, God. We pray that they'll continue to come along in this journey with us, continue to learn, continue to understand your word. 
God, we just love you, God. I pray for God and protection over them as they leave this call for today. And I pray for God and protection over every single body that's watching uh, the video right now in this upcoming week, God. We just thank you and we praise you, God. We just pray that iron will be able to sharpen iron, God. In Jesus, in your holy name, amen. 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 This is the end of the video, guys. Thank you guys for watching the 40th episode of Bible Study. We're 10 more episodes away from 50, 60 more episodes away from 100. We're going to continue to grind, continue to grow, continue to educate ourselves, continue to learn, continue to speak, continue to let God use us. And most importantly, we're going to continue to let iron sharpen iron. And just continue to come along with us, guys. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe if you're new, turn your post notifications, and this is Motivation for Young Christians. I'll see you guys next week.